Well, hello there. I'm nestled into my hotel lobby to tell you a holiday tale. Convenient of them to have a cosy armchair and a crackling fire. Perfect for the occasion. This story is called A Roaming Gnome Holiday. Yes, it's about me. Ahem. For as long as there have been humans, there have been stupid fads with equally stupid names. In the 2010s, we had a thing called planking, for instance, wherein you laid face down, generally in an unusual location where one would not often be found lying down. But sometimes even a stupid fad can be good, and one of the more entertaining fads was called gnoming. This is when a garden gnome lawn ornament is brought on a trip and photographed in front of famous landmarks. In fact, oftentimes it'd be an outright prank, where people would steal a gnome from a garden, then send the owners photos of the gnome for a period of time before returning it. This was further exampled upon in the famous French film Amelie. In fact, perhaps even more hilarious is the fact that this act, in turn, helped create something called the Garden Gnome Liberation Front in France, which honestly kind of sounds like a revolutionary group in a fantasy novel that's rising up against their oppressors. This community considers gnoming to be stealing gnomes without the intention of returning them as part of their purported mission to free the gnomes or return them to the wild. This action of which has sometimes inevitably led to criminal charges, jail time, or even fines. For God's sakes, in 1998, they even staged a mass suicide of gnomes by hanging 11 of them with nooses around their necks under a bridge at Brie in northeastern France, with a note that read, When you read these few words, we will no longer be part of your selfish world, where we serve merely as pretty decorations. Imagine, sitting in a jail cell next to a murderer and saying, I'm locked up for staging a gnome suicide. Sure. Your cellmate might have skinned his parents alive to make a funny hat, but even he'd be disgusted at your atrocities. But perhaps even in the annals of gnoming history has there never been a more famous example than the Travelocity Gnome Campaign. There is truth in advertising, yes I swear, yes I swear Got new Nikes on my feet and beat out Sassoon in my hair I can sure use a Budweiser for the Bloom underwear There is truth in advertising, I swear Why would they lie to me when they love what they sell? Plus we all know that the liars have a special fire in hell On the television, radio, and in the magazine The advertising gods perpetuate the American dream Let it be, let it be Now I know that I don't need to buy everything to try to sell me But so easily divided is a fool and his money There is truth in advertising, let it be Why would they lie to me when they all love what they sell? Plus we all know that the liars got a special fire in hell On the television, radio, and in the magazines The advertising got to pet you Traveling sucks. I'm just gonna say it. Traveling sucks, and anyone who pretends to like it is only doing so to seem hip and world conscious. Nobody likes it, and it's time we all admitted that. We're all adults here, okay? We can acknowledge our lies and live with our truths. Traveling sucks. End of story. But you know what somehow sucks even more than traveling? Making plans to travel. And before the internet took on an unyielding grasp over every facet of our daily lives, it was even more frustrating. Once you could easily book tickets online, however, traveling became slightly easier. Not better, just easier. Travelocity is an online travel agency owned by the Expedia Group, who also owns Hotels.com. These people are consummate professionals, not to mention one of the pioneers of web-based disintermediation which sounds more like a hex one would cast on their enemies than an actual word. This website was the first website that allowed consumers the ability to purchase travel tickets without the help of a person. 
Automation is only good if it actually makes our lives easier, without screwing us over as the working class in the process. And this is probably one of those rare instances. Travelocity was founded in 1996, yet, despite being a rousing success from the get-go, their most famous ad campaign wouldn't be created until 2004. Why they chose the traveling gnome, however, has never really been explained, but the reasoning is pretty obvious regardless, I'd say. But, I mean, the fact that this was already a concept going all the way back to the 70s, so it was fairly familiar territory, and nothing breeds success like familiarity. Just ask any network who keeps attempting reboots of popular franchises. The campaign was invented by Lisa Shimo Takahara and Philip Marchington of McKinney and Silver, an advertising agency in Durham, North Carolina. While Avant Garde Studio, <laughs> a more pretentious name I cannot imagine, lead artists Amy Medford and Leonid Siva River worked with Marchington to design and create the unique look of what was to become known as the Travelocity Roaming Gnome. And for a good while, the roaming gnome was inescapable. He was on every channel, in every ad break, mocked and caricatured in every conceivable format, becoming instantly ubiquitous within pop culture mascot history. It's not often that a mascot is instantly enduring, but this was one of those times. In fact, he became so popular that, in order to leverage the then-new social media trend, Travelocity created an official MySpace page in 2007 for the gnome. This later expanded to Twitter, Instagram, and even, for some reason, Chat Roulette. Let me tell you, coming across the gnome on Chat Roulette would have been a welcome difference compared to the other things one often came across on there. The advertisements were voiced by famed English comedian Harry Enfield, and really, kind of like the Geico Gecko, I can't imagine anyone else doing it at this point. They were simplistic ads too, with the gnome simply visiting far off locales and making witty quips about traveling. He was charming, he was delightful, and for an inanimate object that somehow managed to get around the world with ease, he was somehow trustworthy. All solid qualities one looks for in a mascot. However, when Travelocity hired a new advertising agency, Campbell Ewald, to feature the company as a trusted travel source, the gnome became less dependent on. He still appeared in commercials, but now his role was relegated to denouncer of traveler myths. In these ads, he discussed two myths, one where the gnome states that Travelocity services are able to denounce the myth, and the other where the gnome ends up causing a mess. For example, in one commercial, he visits the Bermuda Triangle to see if things actually do vanish inside it, denouncing the myth outright, up until he vanishes mid-sentence. A cute concept, but nowhere near as memorable as the originals. But the gnome's seemingly pseudo-retirement didn't mean that he wasn't still famous. In 2006, a major promotion involved 20 Travelocity gnomes to be carefully hidden through the four and a half acre atrium of Gaylord Palms Resort and Convention Center in Kissimmee, Florida. During the resort's Christmas promotion, guests were encouraged to find the gnomes in order to win a cruise to Alaska. Hell, even the reality television series, The Amazing Race, featured the roaming gnome on a leg in multiple seasons, where teams are required to pick up and subsequently carry him around while they complete the episode's tasks, eventually bringing the roaming gnome to the pit stop. The Travelocity gnome, as previously stated, is still around. In fact, I almost guarantee that at some point, as has happened in the past, someone will inevitably comment on this episode and say, this mascot isn't dead to which I will roll my eyes and once again reiterate that the title of this series is a misnomer, no pun intended. A lot of the mascots featured on the show are in fact still around. They simply no longer have the cultural presence they once had, which is why the series is titled what it is. Also, it sounds cool. However, while you can still follow the gnome on Instagram and Twitter, I should ask, when was the last time you actually saw a roaming gnome ad on television? Exactly. Unlike other episodes, the Travelocity gnome isn't a fascinating tale of intrigue and mystery. He didn't get his own television show, nor did he jumpstart someone's entire career. 
He simply was a mascot, Someday, doing his we'll job right in the classical See, and admirable sense. Get Just right because he didn't get franchised into oblivion in fact, doesn't make day. him any less of a famous mascot. He was still referenced and seen non-stop for a good few years. Okay, so sure, he didn't have an entire album based around him, but the roaming gnome didn't have time to go to the recording studio, damn it! He was far too busy seeing the world. You know, advertising is funny. Sometimes an advert can drive you crazy, only to realize, once you haven't seen it in 10 years, how endearing it simply became through its irritability. Things that bug you now will seem oddly comforting in the coming years. I think that's the benefit we have living in the modern age, is that nothing has to disappear forever. Not only can we revisit campaigns on sites like YouTube, but mascots now, even if their television campaign ends, can still exist through sites like Twitter and Instagram. And frankly, there might never be a better example of a mascot needing an Instagram than the roaming gnome. If you look through his posts, he's relaxing on beaches, visiting forests, and still exploring the world. He's still here. In 2016, a gnome named Norman was stolen from its owner in Luton, England. The thief sent him a letter stating, Goodbyes are not forever. Goodbyes are not the end. They simply mean I'll miss you until we meet again. He then created a Facebook profile in the gnome's name and followed up by posting pictures of it in many locations, such as theaters, pubs, a bowling alley, and even an arcade. And while the act might be one of somewhat malice, the sentiment nonetheless rings true. Nobody goes away forever, and who knows? Maybe one day you'll get on a plane and you'll find yourself seated next to the roaming gnome. But if you do find yourself in this situation, don't ask him for an autograph. The man's on vacation. It's just rude.